ShireSociety.com. Yeah, I'm going to let him speak for me, though. I'm going to ask you a question anyway. <laughs> okay. Well, to what extent, I mean, I, I appreciate that you guys are focusing on the Constitution and, and this, the supporting the state Constitution, but what about the, the rights, the constitutional rights that these kids don't have once they sure. go into these government schools? Sure. I think what's, I think uh, there's no question that individuals have the right to choose their schools, but the key question here, though, is under the state Constitution, can public funds be used for religious schools? And I think really that's ultimately the question that this court has to resolve at the end of the day. Well, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure there's, there's a lot of arguments as to whether or not it's really government funding of the schools, since it's just a tax credit. It's just yeah. people keeping their money, isn't it? Yeah, well, we think if you look at some of the cases, including the property tax credit case, we think that this court has been very clear that these are public funds. So. I, could, I actually have to run, though, but I'll ask uh, one, more, one more question. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, I mean, how do you, um, I mean, do you feel like you can guarantee the safety of all these students that you're going to be forcing into the government schools or yeah. back into the government schools? And again, schools? I, don't, I don't think that's ultimately the question that's before the court. It's really as simple as under Article 83, you know, are these public funds and are, well, they, be, are they being used to fund religious education? Oh, okay. One and, you, and you're done. All right. Okay. Thanks so much. Have a good one. Appreciate your time. Sure, I don't think you answered my question earlier as to whether you're one of the plaintiffs in this case. Can you guarantee the safety of kids you would be putting into these government schools or putting back into them? What about their other constitutional rights that are not respected in the schools? Based on highest lowest income, right? So 91% of our scholarships that they have some option, right? And so at least in this particular case, whether I have to live under Judge Lewis's ruling or not, I'm able to help families have some options. More options, it would be better. Okay. Yeah. Thanks very much, Kate. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. Have a good one. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Uh, Mr. Duncan, correct? Yes. You're one of the plaintiffs, correct? Yep. Uh, let me ask you something. I, I, one of the people in the audience said you're one of the worst of the plaintiffs because you're a millionaire and you don't have to worry about how you're going to fund sending kids to private school and stuff like that. These folks do have to worry about it. Well, it's just rhetoric. Don't worry about it. Well, I'm a little bit worried about it. Not too much. I'm glad you're a millionaire. <laughs> But, but the uh, other question I have is, can you guarantee the safety of the kids you would be forcing into these government schools? You know they're more dangerous, correct? What about the First Amendment, or not First Amendment, but the free speech rights of students in government schools? Do they have any? Do you care about the Constitution in that case? Are students allowed to defend themselves in school with a camera? Are adults allowed to defend the kids with firearms? So I got to give credit to these attorneys. At least they stuck around, answered all the questions, played a little bit of transparency. Well, one of the reasons the gun issue is kind of big to me is because in the Constitution, the New York Constitution, it says, quote, all persons have the right to keep and bear arms in defense of themselves, their family, their property, and the state. So to me, what that says is they, it's a right, they, that means they've got the right to do it in school. I mean, I can't think of another place that would be more appropriate for defending the state than inside a school. That's, that's their sort of state-run schools. 
and you'd be defending them if you had a firearm. And this constitutional, you know, amendment from 1982 says it's a, you know, it's a, it's a right. Would these plaintiff types still be such constitutionalists uh, on this particular amendment? Uh, you know, I always have respect for a lawyer that's a little bit of a character. Putting one of those on your head and qualify you. <laughs> the old world is collapsing, and it's going to take its slave driver governments with it. But what will rise up in their place? In New Hampshire, the Shire Society has a plan a thriving web forum, and a history of action. He didn't take long to come up with a plan. You can sign up right now at ShireSociety.com.